All right, Shalom. This is the brother in the hall here from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word. All right, and to the Aquath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Real quick, this is 2nd Edges chapter 8 and verse 51. And it reads, But understand thou for thyself, and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. For unto you is paradise opened, the tree of life is planted, the time to come is prepared, plenteousness is made ready, a city is builded, and rest is allowed. Yea, perfect goodness and wisdom. All right, now I want to go into a lesson through the Spirit uh, based on this understanding. All right. Um, the Lord didn't make the world for us to just struggle and live um, or survive forever, man. Like, this was not the reason life was made. But um, it says, that's why the scripture says, Under, uh, understand for thou, for thyself, and such as be like unto thee. Because what this world has done to most of the people on the planet, it has conditioned them to, th to think that this is as good as it will ever get. This is why most people find their enjoyment in video games. You know, they find their enjoyment in uh, chasing women. All right. All of these different things are because life is not really enjoyed. All right. Rest is not allowed in this place. So people often lean toward distractions to comfort themselves. When you understand that through the spirit of Pavi Habashimel Shah that the Lord created the earth to be inhabited. All right, not to just uh, be a planet, a prison planet of survival, all right, but to be inhabited. All right, when you see uh, videos of kids, you know, dealing with the fact that that at a at a teenage, you know, they're dealing with their dead friends, uh, watching their friends die, all right, watching their friends pass away, all right, and be murdered, and then have to carry on life, understanding that. Nothing about that is normal, all right? Nothing about the way Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans live is normal. All right, that's why I love 2nd uh, to 8th chapter because the Lord talks about paradise, all right? The thoughts of peace that he has for the nation of Yasha Allah, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Because the way we live as a nation of people is, is just, it's not normal, man. It's not normal at all, all right? It's terrible. All right, now through the spirit, you know, the Lord has given our people a strong spirit to endure these things, all right, to survive these things, to even make light of these things, but it doesn't change the fact that it's not normal, man. Kids who self-medicate because at a young age they're dealing with violence uh, that they've grown up in. And if you're lucky enough to make it out, you're still treated like a nigga anyway. Nothing about that situation is normal, man. And the generations of our people that have dwelt in Babylon so long have adopted this as normal. There's no way that a, a man of the nation of Israel should have to run to a video game to find some enjoyment in life, man. That's escapism. All right, that's depending on distractions to... Uh, escape from the world that you live in. Nothing about that is normal. You have uh, Edomite children who have the luxury of, you know, diving into video games because they don't have to worry about being born into a world where their parents don't have anything. If you have both parents in your household. Nothing about that is normal. And this is why the scriptures describe this as good news or good tidings. Because it represents a change in what our people call normal. See, what our people are supposed to call normal, all right, is not having no worries. And not just saying that, you know, your life is, everything around your life is falling apart, but you just, you're not worried about it. I'm talking about your life is so well off that you don't have, you literally don't have anything to worry about. That should be the normal. But right now, only a remnant of our people are looking forward to the new normal, all right? Not the new normal that's being presented to us now, but the new normal that represents the kingdom of heaven, man. 
where rest is allowed. You think about the culture that we grow up in where they teach you that you just gotta, you gotta work four or five jobs and you know, stack your money up to one day live at an old age, live good. Like that, nothing about that is, is normal. Even for the other nations, nothing about that is normal. That's not how the, uh, the men of the ancient world had to live. Man got three jobs, got three uniforms and go from job to job, you know, barely surviving. The reward of his labors is that he barely survived. Nothing about that is normal. That's why we look forward to new heavens and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, man. All right, because there ain't no righteousness here. Everything is a small uh, similitude. It's an it's a, it's a imitation. It's not even real. All the people that Esau put up as, as uh, well off, they burnt out. You can see it on their spirit. They're not rested. Whatever so-called riches they have, they don't get to enjoy it. And the next generation looks up to those guys as, as, and they aspire to do the same thing because that's all they see here, man. Babylon has done a number on our people, man, for real. All right, uh, this is 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 13. And it reads, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, man. Because nothing about this is normal. Again, I'm going to say that because uh, Lord willing, I, I put the uh, clip of the individual um, in the beginning. But you had an individual and you could tell that the kid was high. But when you look at his backstory, he was dealing with the trauma of, of one of his uh, friends getting smoked in front of him, man. And he's, I think he was, he said he was 17 when it happened. Friend got smoked in front of him. And now he just get high to deal with the pain, the PTSD of, uh, of, of that whole situation. And he's not an isolated incident. He just happens to have a name and a person that he died that died uh, while he was there had a name. A musician, a, a rapper. But this shows you that we grow up in a situation that we've called normal that's really traumatic, man. Nothing is nothing is real about nothing. This ain't normal, man. Like our people look at this as normal. You know, they glorify, but ain't nothing sweet about this. Ain't nothing cool about your kids, you looking at your babies and they got to grow up in a world that's like this. Well, the moment they get old enough to have friends, the peer pressure is all about how much dirt you can do and glorifying that. Or growing up in a household where you have the pressure to be the man at like 13 or 14 years old because you ain't got no daddy in the house. And then you got a lot of women who, who try to coach their, their sons to be men and, and they and they feel that weight of responsibility and they start doing man things at a child age, man. Getting themselves into situations that they can't get out of. Nothing about this is normal. And then our people look at us, you know, through the spirit of poverty, how about Shemel Shai, because we desire a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness, but we don't have to suffer dealing, uh, dealing with these people, all right? Putting on this front like you happy, all right? Pretending like you, uh, having to put on this mask to be around other nations. Like nothing about that is normal. The earth is in, in a, in a terrible state all the way around, all across the board. Right. But as a nation of people through the spirit, the scriptures say that the curses cleave unto us, man. And what we're suffering is the curses. And you know, our people make light of it. You know, they find ways to uh, still smile you know, the Lord put a resilient spirit on our people. But it doesn't mean that it's going to be like this forever and we should just make peace with it being like this. You know, we get on two-thirds, but it's like the world the world as a whole is defiled, man. Everything is vain and fake and imitations. And don't get me wrong, we strive through the spirit of poverty, how about Shemel Shai, all right, to, uh, to take care of our responsibilities. You know, to, uh, to get our daily bread, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, we desire a new heaven and a new earth. Most of our people just desire a bigger situation for themselves personally. And when you look at the environment that our people grow up in, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. But it's not normal. 
All right, that's why the scriptures say the curse is going to cleave unto us. Meaning no matter where you go, if you think you get in a new tax bracket, your new tax bracket don't escape the curses. It don't mean you neglect your responsibilities and you just, you know, you give up on life. You still got to take care of your business. But at the end of the day, our heart is in the promise of Yahweh Shem Shai that we won't have to do this rat race forever, man. That's why I love 2nd Edge to 8th chapter because one of the greatest things it tells us and, it's, and it showed you how far off and how far we've fallen is that rest will be allowed. We don't even know what that's like outside of a PTO day, man. All right, real quick, this Baruch chapter 1 and verse 20. I mean, I'll start at 19 because this is beautiful. It says, since the day that the Lord brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt unto, us, unto this present day, we have been disobedient unto the Lord our power. And this is why we under these curses, man, because ultimately we wanted to go into our own way. We wanted to figure it out for ourselves, and the Lord left us to our own counsel. All right. And, and what happened? And it says, and we have been negligent and not hearing his voice. And a part of that is, is for our profiting. All of it is, is for our profiting. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not commit adultery. Do not covet thy neighbor, uh, thy neighbor's wife or, or their possessions or anything like that. And those are just one of many. The, the dietary law, all of this was established for our welfare. But because we wanted to be disobedient, we found ourselves in this situation. But it's not normal. It was actually supposed to make us want to return to the Lord. Our The curses were supposed to be so bad on our people, right? That we looked at the Lord and was like, man, we got to come home. Now, according to prophecy, only a remnant of our people would do that. But ultimately, the curses were meant as a deterrent, meaning it was meant for us to, to, um, to return to the Lord and be obedient. Because the cost of not being obedient was greater. All right, the consequences were greater. For being disobedient, all right, as opposed to just being obedient and having rest and having uh, um, uh, being exalted and having things and having peace and quiet. The curses were meant for us to look at it and go through it and be like, damn, I don't want to go through that no more. Not the glory in it. And that's what our people have done. They've gloried in it, man. And these things are our shame. You know, the Lord said that uh, we've uh, traded our shame uh traded our glory for that which does not profit basically we turned our glory into a shame by being negligent by being disobedient to Yahweh by Shemel Shai all right now verse 20 reads wherefore the evils cleaved unto us and the curse which the Lord appointed by Moses his servant at the time that he brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt and that's what we've been going through since we've left the land of Egypt, we've been disobedient. There's been small pockets of time where we've been obedient, but for the most part, we've been disobedient to Yahweh by Shemel Shah, man. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And that's why the curse cleaves unto us unto this day, man. And nothing is normal about our situation, man. That's why the Lord said he only knew us. So he would do what? He would punish us for all of our iniquity. This is why we're going through this by ourselves, but it doesn't mean that it's normal, man. And I and, and as I meditate on it, you know, as I watch what's going on through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemel Shah as a watchman, you know, I watch prophecy, of course, on the global stage, and then you watch the condition of our people and how they digest being in the curses and still being rebellious. And they're not tired of, uh, of rebelling against the Heavenly Father. That's why ultimately the Lord will have to kill two-thirds of our people. Because this, this world hasn't made them tired. They glory in, in the uh, position that we're in on the earth. And that's why ultimately the Lord called them vile uh, figs, evil figs that cannot be eaten. Vile figs that cannot be eaten, they're so evil. Because now our people just glory in our shame, man. But it's not normal, you know, having to worry when you have children. It's not normal that you come into a household, you're born into a family that's broke. You got great granddaddies, great uh, great uh, 
granddaddies, great granddaddies, great great granddaddies, and all of those generations, you born and you got to start from scratch. Ain't nothing normal about that, man. You done spent six or seven generations in public housing. Ain't nothing normal about that. And then our people get all down and out and, and depressed and they self-medicate because they believe some, somehow they're a failure. You got all of these motivational speakers telling our people that, you know, you choose to be, um, you choose to be broke. When these nations done got generations of head starts on you, man. A lot of these uh, families, especially of these Edomites, they family started, they successful, they success in their family started with the welfare program, with the housing program, that made sure that they had loans with low interest rates to uh, purchase houses that have increased in value through generations. But when you bring these things up, our people look at you like you just complaining. But it's not a desire for you to just personally have something, man. We want the whole nation to be good, man. Most importantly, it ain't about what we want. How about Shemal Shah said that he made the earth to be inhabited. That he knows the thoughts that he thinks toward us. A thoughts of peace. That's, and it's crazy because you know you can only imagine the pressure of Jake growing up in a world. They don't have truth. When they hear the truth, they reject it. And then on top of that, when you look at Jake, they born into a family where their mama's struggling, all right? They, they grannies struggled, you know? They struggling, and they don't want to live like that. They tired of living like that, so what do they do? You know, they, they make decisions. They make grown man decisions at, 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 a, at a young age, all right? Based on following the blueprint of what they've been taught and glorified, and then they fall in this ditch. Now, again, through the spirit of Pavi Al-Bashim al we are held accountable for our actions because ultimately we're here because of our iniquity, all right? Because we neglected Yahweh Al-Bashim al all right? So he uh, rejected us. But when you look at how this is set up, nothing about this is normal, all right? No nation, no other nation on the planet of Earth, even if they're uh, in India, they may be considered a poor country of people, but they're born into a generation. They're born into a family that's established, they know where they come from. They know their history. All right, the Elamites, they know their history. They, they, they've dwelt in their history for, for centuries, for generations. Jake just running around aimlessly, trying to figure out who they is, wearing kufis, just trying to figure out life. On top of being broke, on, on top of not being established as far as your family uh, structure. And the law, statutes, and commandments were created all right, were established through the spirit of Pavi Al Bashim Al Shai so that we would benefit as a nation of people from generation to generation, not just one lifetime. All right, matter of fact, let's go to that. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 2. And I'm going to jump down to 11. And it reads, Hath a nation changed their gods which are yet no gods? For my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this. And be horribly afraid, afraid, be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. So it's not just an economic problem with our people, contrary to popular belief. It's deeper than just economics. Our people have grown up generation after generation, really not even knowing who they are. So much so that when you tell them who they are, who they are with all of the history to back it up, they still can't receive it. And they've hewed them out cisterns that can hold no water. Jake in Islam, Jake still, Jake is still a Christian. Be, uh, against all odds, Jake is still a Christian in 2021, uh, 2022. You know, you got Jakes that are Buddhist. And none of this is normal where well, you got to go to all of these different religions to try to find yourself. See, the difference between us and other nations is they go to other, they might tap into somebody else's belief system, but they know what their belief system is. Moab, they know what their belief system is. Elam, as, as bugged out as it is, they know they have their belief system. It's Jake trying to 
move around and try to break uh, a hew out cisterns. Every 10 or 20 years, they find a new cistern to try to find their own identity, man. Ain't nothing normal about that. And the list goes on. All right, let's go to this. And I was going to grab it before, but the Spirit had me pull over. This is Haggai 1 and 5. All right, and it reads, Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Now this is the Lord saying, consider this. Consider that for generations I done been doing this to y'all. And you can say it's 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 cause, you know, Jake choose to be a gangster or whatever, you know, Jake choose to not Jake is lazy. One thing our people aren't, bro, from generation to generation is lazy. Jake know how to put in work. It's just they put in work for wickedness, man. All right? But when you look at this, the Lord is saying, consider y'all position on the earth. Consider what's going on as a whole. Not just, you know, some scammers, all right, or some guy, some Jake who got a corporate job. Consider y'all situation on average. You bring in, you you toil much, all right? You sow much, but you bring in little. Jake got six or seven hustles, barely making it. And then Jake look in the mirror and look at them, themselves like a failure because they really just fighting against the curses. I mean, you still got to, you got to handle your responsibilities through the spirit and poverty, how by Shemel Shai. But you got Jake who look in the mirror and because they don't receive this knowledge, wisdom and understanding, they think it's their own, their own destiny or their own situation that they've just, they're just a failure. Well, really, it's the Lord. Let's get it. Let's show you. All right. It says, uh, and he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. All right. It says, verse nine, I'm going to jump down to nine. And it reads, ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow on it, upon it. So the Lord is saying, he blew upon it. You did all that hustling, you did all that grinding, and, and then you came home and the Lord blew on it. Why is that? All right, and he says, why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because of mine house that is waste, and you run every man unto his own house. So Jake, as a nation of people, are, are so busy trying to build up their own situation that they give zero time to the Lord, man. They give zero time into building up our nation because this is how it's built up. It's not built up through uh, through earn your leisure summits, you know. Having now having a knowledge of finances and, and different things of that nature, uh, it's not it's not a bad thing. But you have to understand the, the, the signs and the times that we're living in as well. All of this goes in, in, in and when you, have, when you don't have a foundation and you're so desperate to build up your own house, you're going to be tossed to and fro. And this is why the Lord said his house lay waste, because ultimately it's about building up the nation of Yahshua Allah, first and foremost. Now, whatever you have to do for your situation, whatever hustle or business you do, that's your business. But through the spirit, the Lord desires, especially the men of our nation, all right, to dedicate their time to building up the house of Yahshua Allah. You got Jake who don't want to know about the news. They don't want to know what's going on in the world at all. They're so locked in on, on building up their own house. That's why the, the, the scriptures say the day of the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night because a lot of our people are not looking for it. Because the Lord's house lay waste and inside of the Lord's house is the knowledge of what's going on. And when you look at our people's situation, bro, nothing about this is normal, bro. Jake making guns off of 3D printers and taunting each other on social media. and Like nothing about this is normal. You and, and, and one other dude is the only two uh, so-called black people that work at your job. And y'all got to, y'all can't even be yourself. When it come to what the so-called white man did to y'all, y'all got to, y'all got to shut up. Y'all got to be quiet about it. Because you, you being fed by the face of a dragon. And you got to teach the next generation to do that too. Nothing about that is normal. 
Jake gang banging at 12 years old. Nothing about that is normal, man. Jake whole life done consisted of two blocks. And niggas that look, uh, excuse my French, guys that look just like him want to kill him. Nothing about that is normal. And this, is, this goes for the Northern Kingdom too. That's why scriptures say, is Israel a homeborn slave, man? Like this, if this is all you betting on and you want to give to your next generation, man, this is, that's a low level thought process. All the phantoms and the Maybachs in the world won't change your people's condition, bro. That's just, that's just facts. Because most of the ones who got it, they paid to keep quiet. LeBron James know what not to say. Charlemagne the God, they know what not to say. Because they ultimately know who the gatekeeper is. And as a nation of people, that shows you that you're in subjection. And nothing about that is normal. The fact that you can't even speak on what's happened to your people without being considered a conspiracy theory or, or, or woke with quotation marks. Meaning you're mocked for speaking on what's happened to your people as a whole. And this is, uh, this is why the scriptures say this, man. Let's get this. And I love touching these milk scriptures because, again, we're in a time where, where these scriptures that we've read thousands of times are living in our day and age, man. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1 reads, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. And that's what this world has done. That's why they are so bent on telling you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans to forget the past. Whether it's people that look just like you, like Snoop Dogg. All right. I, I forget who else. There was another guy that said that he tired of seeing those movies that remind you of our history. And our people are the only ones that think like that. Here it is. Japan has a, a day, a memorial day to celebrate, uh, to, uh, I will say, I won't even say celebrate, to commemorate those bombs being dropped on them. So every day, every anniversary of that, that event, they remind themselves of what happened to themselves. They remind themselves of what happened to their country, what Esau Edom, the so-called white man, did to them. Just like in Babylon the Great on September 11th, they commemorate that. Whenever it comes, uh, whenever that day comes, they remind themselves of what has happened to them. When you talk about those Israelis, small hats. They talk about the anniversary, all right, of you know what? And they remind themselves of what has been done to them. But you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, they're hell-bent on making you forget that. Because truth be told, this whole world was built on your back. And yet, yeah, there's, there's, our people have endless potential. But when you boxing against your Haobah Shemal Shah, nobody gonna win that fight. You can try to circumvent the curses if you want to. They're just gonna meet you in that new tax bracket. That's why... Better is little with the fear of the Lord. And if you have something, if the Lord gives you uh, abundance, then don't set your heart upon it, as the scriptures say. Because the scriptures do say money is a defense. But if that's all you're living your life for, you're done. You're a homeborn slave. And when all of these things come to pass, and they will come to pass, you're going to be caught up with it. Because ultimately, this is not our, this is not our rest, man. This is not our rest. All right? It's not normal that a nation of people are, are groomed to be entertainers. A, a whole nation of people are groomed to be entertainers. Not rocket scientists, not uh, mathematicians, not, not uh, none of that. You go to schools where you learn your history at slavery. That's where you start off at. Nothing about that is normal, man. And the same people who teaching you are uh, belong to the nation of the people that did it to you. Nothing about that is normal, all right? Micah 2 and 10 reads, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with the sword destruction. So whenever you try to fight against the Lord, this place is going to destroy you. Now, we, we have balance again, and that's why I want to reiterate that through the spirit. 
you know, you have to get your daily bread. You have to work to eat. Lord willing, we're, uh, we're a part of that number of, of the elect. You know, the Lord is going to uh, protect us in those days. But our mind, we desire a new heaven and a new earth, man. Whereas Jake's great. If you ask Jake right now, if you could have anything in the world, what would you want? Jake would say, I want a big house. You know, I want a zillion dollars. I, I want to be able to, you know, buy my mama a house. You ask us what we want, the kingdom of heaven, man. To see Yahweh Shah on his throne and rulership. That is, the, that. if you asked us what we wanted, those who desire this Lord willing we be a part of that number, that's what we want. A house in the suburbs ain't enough, man. That's small. We want the kingdom of heaven, man, wherein dwelleth righteousness, a new heaven and a new earth. Not this where you may have a, a house in the suburbs, but you got to go visit your granny in the projects. And the same niggas you grew up with want to kill you because you got a little bit more than them. That's not what that's not our highest aspiration. That's not our biggest dream. If you came up to a, a Israelite. All right. And ask them. All right. What do they desire? We're going to tell you the kingdom of heaven, man. Lord, will we be a part of that number? The elect are going to say that. Whereas most of our people have been conditioned to just want something for their own house. Forget their own people at this point. Because everybody's struggling and starving. And they're not trying to hear about Yahweh by Shema Shah because they, they belly growling. And they don't understand that the reason their belly is growling is because of Yahweh by Shema Shah, man. It makes sense to just return to the source instead of fighting against the unbeatable. Come on, man. This is uh, Isaiah 42 and 24. Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not Yahweh by Shema Shai, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. And our people don't think as a whole. They don't think as a nation. That's why they don't see any problem with the so-called white man, but they'll see a problem with two blocks down because they killed uh, they killed your best friend when you was growing up and, and it's been on ever since and it's just been body for body ever since. Ain't nothing normal about that, man. But ultimately, the Lord gave us over to the, uh, the spoilers. And this is why you're born into a world like this. While women wear fake hair and tell us that they only want a, a man with six figures. You think these Il the, the Elamites, you think that that's how they live their life? You think that's their culture? Then they women grow up and say, I just want a, a man with uh, six figures. I just want... Nah, man, we've been conditioned to think like that. You got Ishmaelite and, and Elamite men with more women than they can handle. And then you got Jake, whose woman tells him, if they don't make some impossible number, all right, that only a small percentage of people in the in the United States and the world make in general, then you can't even talk to them. Nothing about this is normal. Where our people have uh, been groomed to be consumers and entertainers, that's it. When you think about Jake who worked two or three jobs, they only do it to buy things that really they don't even need. But that's the culture we've grown up in, man. And that's why we desire a new heaven and a new earth where in dwells righteousness, man. Where the whole nation can be on good terms. Now, ultimately, the elect are going to make it on this side. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. And two-thirds of our people are going to be destroyed because they refuse to return. But even mercy will be given to them because through the children of the elect, they'll come back. The Lord ain't just going to have them go through all of this and then... They just fade to black. Whereas Esau done got to live deliciously for generation off a of generation off a of generation. Nah, man. But this is the uh this is our reality through the spirit. And that's why we desire a new heaven and a new earth. And that's why the prophecies look different to us. We don't look at what's going on, on, on the news and get disappointed or get upset. We look at it and say the Wadi Yahweh by Shemel Shah when it concerns war, all right, when it concerns um, the uh, the beast, the MOTB, the Karagma system, because we know we're closer and closer to the end. We understand it's going to be a, 
uh, uh, hour of temptation that we have to, Lord willing, uh, make it through. But that's the only way we're going to get to that wide, that city that's set on the hill. And that's ultimately where our helmet of salvation is. That's where our mind is. On a new heaven and new earth. We have to deal with our situations here through the spirit. But ultimately our mind is in the heavens. Because again, this is not normal, man. The idea that this is as good as it gets and you got to pass this down to your, uh, your next generation. The only thing you can give your kid in, in the next generation is an apartment and your gaming headset with your PS5 or whatever game that they got by that time. That ain't real. That ain't normal. But the Lord made it this way so it would never be our rest. So you either make peace with being rebellious until the Lord destroy you, you make peace with being wicked, or you desire a new heaven and new earth. And that's the division between the remnant and two-thirds of our people, man. The remnant desires something greater than this, actual freedom. Not liberty, not permission, but sovereignty. All right, so Lord willing, this was edifying. With that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yahshua Allah. And a sincere salutation to all Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word. And to the Aqua, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.